It's Lab Muffin Beauty Science here, one of the nerdiest beauty channels on YouTube. And today we're going to be talking about whether the blue light from screens, like your laptop screen or your phone screen, is going to damage your skin. It's a valid concern because if you're anything like me, you wear a ton of sunscreen and you're hyper aware of your sun exposure. But during the day you're parked in front of a computer screen, and at night you take off all your sunscreen and then stare at electronic devices. You've probably also heard about how blue light hitting your eyes can mess up your circadian rhythm and sleep patterns. I recently posted a video about how visible light can damage your skin, and how to protect your skin against it. I've linked it in the caption below, and it's a good idea to watch that video first. The key points that you need to know from that video to understand this video are Visible light can theoretically damage your skin. Higher energy blue and violet light with shorter wavelengths are the colours that are the most harmful. Blue light causes pigmentation in dark skinned people, but in a different way from UV. So you need a different amount compared to UV to have any sort of effect. There are a few ingredients that you can use to protect your skin from blue light, iron oxide and antioxidants. But sunscreen won't work, not even a really thick coat of mineral zinc oxide or titanium dioxide sunscreen. So now let's look at the evidence. Is watching this video making your skin worse? Is Lab Muffin Beauty Science a conspiracy to make your skin worse, so you really really need my skincare advice? To answer this question, first we're going to have to work out how much blue light we need to cause skin damage. The next little section is a bit of nerdy maths talk, in case you're interested in how I came up with these numbers. If you're not really into this and you just want the results, feel free to tune out until the bouncing muffin face is gone. From the studies, it seems that the total amount of light energy hitting your skin is the most important thing to look at. This is called the dose, or flux, and it's measured in joules per square centimeter. To calculate how long you need to be exposed to a light source to get that particular dose, I'm using the intensity of the light or the irradiance, which is measured in watts per square centimeter. One watt is one joule per second. From the studies on human volunteers so far, it's a little tricky because different experiments use different wavelengths of light, but we can get a ballpark figure from these studies. You need at least 40 joules per square centimeter of light for both visible and just blue light. It's not really useful to look at in vitro studies where the skin cells were in petri dishes, since in real life your skin isn't flat like that and there's layers of dead skin protecting the living cells underneath, so real skin should be able to handle more light. Next, let's look at how long it takes to get this 40 joules per square centimetre amount from the sun. The reason we want to look at the sun is that it's by far the biggest source of visible light. It's way higher than the amount that you get from screens or indoor lighting. Think about how easy it is to see stuff in your room during the day, versus if you're trying to see stuff by the light of your phone screen at night. The intensity of sunlight depends on location and the time of year. Here are some approximate times it takes to get that minimum 40 joules per square centimetre of energy from the sun on dark skin to have a noticeable effect. If we're looking at the full spectrum of visible light, so all of the colours together, in summer in Texas, it takes about 13 minutes to get 40 joules per square centimetre. The average at ground level at midday is about 15 minutes. For blue light in the US or southern Europe at midday, on average it takes about 40 minutes to get 40 joules per square centimetre. The light intensity in winter is about one third or two thirds of the amount in summer. Compared to sunlight, the measurements for screen light are a lot more variable. There's a lot of different screens out there, there's CRT, LCD, LED monitors, phones and different tablets, and the light they put out depends on the brightness level you have the screen set to, the sorts of things you're looking at, so for example if you're watching a dark and moody video, or playing a brightly coloured game, or scrolling through your emails which have a white background. There's also lots of different blue light filters, and different amounts of blue light that the different screens put out. I have a list of the values I worked out for the times you need to get 40 joules per square centimetre of light. To get these numbers from the studies and make them comparable, I had to make a bunch of assumptions. So they're probably not really accurate. They're only meant to give us an idea of the relative times you need for these levels of light. 
I have more details about the studies I took the data from, how I got to these numbers and the assumptions I used in the blog post that comes with this video. The average number of hours you need to get 40 joules per square centimetre of light on your skin from a screen is somewhere around 15 to 30 days. There's a bit of a catch here when we're comparing these times. Screens tend to produce more of the shorter wavelengths of light that cause more damage than the sun does. But even if we take the worst case scenario, which is with an iMac with a bright white screen, it's still over a hundred times less damaging than the midday sun. And that's if we're only counting visible light and completely ignoring the UV and infrared radiation from the sun that also causes damage. If we take a four inch smartphone with a bright white screen that's closer to the middle of the range, it's over 2000 times less damaging than the midday sun. So is visible light from phones and computers worth worrying about? For most people, I would say no. Comparing the amount of visible light from screens to the amount from the sun sounds really scary. But it's only scary because the sun also puts out UV, which is what causes most of the skin damage. In the NAMBA study, people who wore a UV protective sunscreen daily, which had no visible light protection, had no detectable increase in aging. Visible light also hasn't been linked to any noticeable changes in the skin apart from one, which is more pigment in people with dark skin. Blue light does seem to cause more free radicals in the skin, but it doesn't seem like this increase directly translates to many of the noticeable effects that we know that free radicals have on the skin, like wrinkles and aging. So until there's more research out, I wouldn't really panic too much about visible light. There are a couple of situations I can think of where you might want to watch out for visible light. If you're undergoing a medical treatment where you're very sensitive to visible light, such as if you're doing photodynamic therapy, or if your skin is darker, Fitzpatrick 4 or above, and you want to fade pigment, and you're already wearing a sunscreen with broad spectrum coverage, and it doesn't seem to be doing enough, then it might be worth avoiding the sun a bit more with things like shade and protective clothing. And maybe it's worth turning down the brightness of your screens a little bit. Obviously, this research is still quite new, so it could well be that in the next few years, we'll get a better idea of whether we should worry about blue light and maybe there will be something new that makes us more cautious. But for now, it seems mostly like it's a marketing craze that isn't backed up by what the scientific evidence says. And that's all about blue light from screens and your skin. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you can subscribe to this channel for more science-based beauty talk and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and on my blog. On my blog, you can also check out lots and lots of science-based beauty articles. And I also have a free guide to exfoliation, which is a fantastic thing to add to your skincare routine if you want smooth, glowing skin. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time for more science and nerding.